an image of me sitting in a small apartment on my own, getting old, with a blanket over my lap, TV right in front of me, like five feet away, like just staring at this TV with a bottle of scotch next to it. Was there a, a noteworthy, significant breakthrough or observation that you have encountered since you stopped drinking, either in Project 90 or Beyond 90, that maybe wasn't specifically related to alcohol, but was related to something that only appeared to you because you were alcohol-free? Definitely, yeah. A um, <clears throat> couple of big ones, I think. Uh, there, was definitely, there were de definitely some aha moments throughout the process, but one of them is... Um, when I was going through a divorce, I'd go and see a counselor uh, who was very good up here. And he always talked about the narrative in your head and how if you have one narrative in your head that's negative or a story that you don't want to happen, you've got to replace it with another one. Um, and leading up to Project 90 and the years, leading, the years before it while I was drinking, I had this reoccurring nightmare of some kind it was a daydream but it was it was just a, it was a really a, a, a an image of me sitting in a small apartment on my own getting old with a blanket over my lap tv right in front of me like five feet away like just staring at this tv with a bottle of scotch next to me and that was my that was my future vision that's who i saw me becoming if i continued the way i was going and that came and went but it was always this one little story that kept bugging me and then going through the 90 days you rewire those stories you 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 open the doors what you get through is i don't get that that story doesn't pop up in my head anymore what i found is all these doors that project 90 has just cracked open just a little bit hasn't led me down some great path to a, you know, a brand new life, but it's just cracked open these doors that are far more interesting to me than the one that I was telling myself before. So that was huge, really, because the story I had in my head was horrible existence. And that, I'm sure, was a lot of the reason that drove me to pick that phone, phone up eventually and, and, and give you a call, because uh, I didn't want to be that person. Uh, I wanted to enjoy you know, going into my 60s and still sort of living with abundance of some kind. Um, the other one, I think, looking back, um, I think alcohol had a lot more to do with uh, me getting a divorce than I ever thought it had done because I recognized how, um, how shut off I was from my own emotions and understanding the emotions of the people I was, or the, my ex-wife. Um, Looking back on that, I'd say, yeah, that was a big regret. But I also feel like I'm, you know, too late in that environment. But uh, I feel like as a as a person, I can make myself uh, a lot more um, emotionally open and more um, in tune with other people's feelings as well. You know, to actually, as I said, have some kind of emotional. Um, maturity coming along and i and i've done a few things with regards to that talking to my kids even writing a letter um but uh it, it was sort of a that sort of that part of the self-discovery finding the things you didn't like about yourself that you could have done something about years beforehand that was that, that's kind of hard to swallow but what's the op the option is to go back to drinking and forget about it not even try something Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that, Mike.